Hey guys. Today I'm going to be telling you about a few houseplants that I do regret purchasing and why I regret purchasing them. I did a video like this about a year ago. I do have several more plants that I'd like to add to the regret buying list for various reasons, and I will be telling you those reasons once we get into the plants, of course. But before we get into the plants, I'd like to take 60 seconds and give a huge thank you to Helix Sleep for making the video this week possible. So thank you so much, Helix Sleep. You guys have heard me talk about Helix so many times on my channel, and it's because I'm genuinely such a fan of my Helix mattress. My partner and I have the Midnight Lux mattress, and we've had it for over a year now, which just goes to show that the Helix Sleep quiz really does help in finding the perfect mattress for your sleeping preferences. You just go online and answer a few quick questions, such as mattress firmness, things like that, and then they'll match you to what they think will work best for you and your sleep style. The biggest difference we're noticing between our old mattress and this one, me, I'm a side sleeper, so I'm like constantly flip-flopping all over the place, and it would kind of shake the bed and wake Ryan up through the night. Well, guess what? That's not happening anymore on our Helix mattress. I am now over 40 weeks pregnant. The Helix mattress really does leave me feeling super supported all night long. With your purchase of a Helix sleep mattress, you do get a 100 night sleep trial and a 10 year warranty. If for whatever reason you don't end up loving your Helix mattress, they will pick it up for you and you'll get a full refund. The best part of all of this is Helix delivers the mattress right to your door anywhere in the US for free. So you don't have to go in store shopping, which I personally hate. If you're interested in trying a new super comfortable mattress that I'm sure you're going to love, go to helix.com slash Harley G for up to $200 off your Helix Sleep mattress and two free pillows. That link will also be down in the description box. Huge thank you to Helix for not only improving my sleep, but also for making the extra video this week possible. With all of that being said, let's get into the plants. Okay, let's get started. I'm nervous. Don't, don't hate me if I talk about your favorite plant. We can agree to disagree right? Right? Okay, number one, bird of paradise. Yes, bird of paradise, which might be kind of shocking to some people to hear because I have talked about this plant so many times on my channel and how much I love it. And I do still love it. Don't get me wrong. The problem I'm having, my bird of paradise plant is getting much too big and growing very quickly. So it's kind of hard for me to keep up with. Don't get me wrong, I think this plant is absolutely beautiful and I love it, like I really do love it. They're super easy to care for, um, but as mine is growing, it is requiring a lot more water, a lot more light. And the only other thing I really can say that makes me not necessarily love this plant anymore, okay, I do still love it, but that kind of makes me regret buying it is the fact that it does lean so much. So Oh, these do live in outdoors in super bright light, like direct, super high indirect light. They just require a lot of light. Otherwise they're going to start to lean. And even, my, even though mine is getting Southern light, which is like the most light you really can get indoors for a plant, it's still leaning and just looking a little bit uneven. So I'm having a hard time with the plant. I mean, you can rotate the plant to make it grow more even, but it's just something I've really struggled with, with my bird of paradise plant, which is why I do regret purchasing this. Although I love it. I think it's beautiful. I'm actually going to pass this along to my sister who has a little bit of a smaller plant collection and maybe can keep up with it a little bit better than I can. So don't worry, it'll go into good hands, but that's where I'm at right now. Bird of paradise, who's surprised? I am, I am. I surprised myself as I was writing down all the plants I wanted to talk about in this video and bird of paradise just came across my paper. The next plants I'm going to talk about are actually a group of plants and it is all of my orchids. Um, you guys did already see me like de-stash these plants from my collection not too long ago. They now live with Heather Hoyas. They're gonna live a very good life there and I'm happy that she can enjoy them whereas I was stressed out by them. But I think this one might be also, okay, maybe all of these will be kind of unpopular opinions, but I loved these orchids so much for over a year now. They were so fun for me. It was really cool to see them blooming and stuff, but I just think I got kind of bored of them. As I had them in my collection, each of them has bloomed now for me. So where it was really exciting to be able to see them bloom finally and like get them to that point, once they bloomed and then the blooms died off, it was kind of like they turned a little bit 
boring to me. Like, I don't know what it is. There's just something about a plant. It's kind of the same thing I feel about succulents, but just a plant that kind of stays the same and just gets like a little bit bigger, but really overall kind of looks the same. I get bored of them and that is something I don't really buy succulents anymore. I probably will no longer really buy orchids anymore either just because they get kind of boring to me. I don't know what it is. There's definitely a difference between like a hanging plant that keeps keeps the excitement going in my mind than like an orchid so i do although i don't like really regret buying i kind of do just because i did get bored of them so of course it was like it was a really good year with them but you know what i mean does that make sense it was a good year, but also like I could have not bought them and I'd still be happy through the year. <laughs> I don't know if that, I actually think in one of my recent videos, I specifically said I don't regret buying them. So like I don't, but I kind of do, you know? Maybe I don't even know. <laughs> Next up is one I don't think anybody will see coming and it is my Peace Lily Sensation. Don't get me wrong, I love the plant. I think it's so beautiful. I've had it for a long time. Since I first moved into my last house, those of you who've watched my channel since the beginning, like I've had this plant pretty much through my entire plant collecting journey, YouTube plant, YouTube journey. And I've really enjoyed it, but the problem I'm having now is it's so big that I'm having a really hard time finding a pot and then also a good spot for it. Part of the reason is I have toddler, I have a toddler with another on the way, <laughs> super pregnant anytime now with another on the way. So I can't leave this plant sitting on the floor, but it is so big, it's hard to like keep it up off the ground as well. So that's just kind of an issue I'm having at the moment, which makes it difficult for me to keep it in a very well lit spot. Right now it's in super low light, which don't get me wrong, it's done really well in this spot. Um, and it's grown a lot. It has bloomed for me right there several times. Like it's doing great. I just can't really repot it because I can't find a pot that is going to fit the root ball very well. And then also be able to fit in my house or like in a corner, a little out of the way corner in my house. And it's kind of leaning, which again, you guys, I'm so bad at rotating my plants. I know, I know I've said before that like a little hack is every time you water, you can rotate your plant like a quarter turn, but I'm just really bad at keeping up on my own advice, I guess, and I just don't. So I, it's leaning very, very bad. So like the front of, if you're looking straight onto this plant, how it sits now, it's beautiful. But if I rotate the plant, it looks so ugly because it is leaning so much. And the only other, issue, although it's not really an issue because I keep it sitting in a bucket of water. Um, it does need watered so often. Like this thing droops every few days because it is so root bound. So as long as I'm able to keep up on the watering and keep enough water in that bucket, like it's fine. But seriously, if I wait four days, even like that, that sucker is going to droop so much. <sighs> While again, I do really love the plant and I think it's so beautiful. It maybe wasn't the best plant for me to purchase. At the time it was when I had more time in my day to take care of a plant, but maybe now where my life is at this point, it's not. Although I am going to be keeping it. I will never be getting rid of this plant because I am so attached to it. So in my brain, I'm like, maybe it would have been better if like I never bought the plant to begin with because then I wouldn't feel this attached to it. You know? All right, another one I shocked myself with as I was thinking about it is actually, <laughs> ironically, also one of my favorite plants. This was quite a different list than last time I did this. Last time I did this, it was like plants were, were doing really poorly, so I regretted buying them. But now that I've figured out my house, this new house I've lived in now for almost two years, I've learned like what plants do well here and what plants don't. So most of my plants are doing pretty well. But okay, I'm going off on a tangent. Anyway, it's Hoyas, specifically my like Hoya Wayetii, Shepherdii, um, species of Finis Berto Bert, we'll just call it species of Finis Bert. I'll put the name on screen. Uh, Hoya Memoria, Crimson Queen, Crimson Princess. All of my Hoyas that I've gotten to bloom, Callistophylla, I now hate, mostly because. I don't like Hoya blooms. Like they're so beautiful and it's really exciting the first time you get a Hoya to bloom um, or a different Hoya variety to bloom because they do look so different and they're, they look fake. They look like candy or like fruit gushers. Like I wanna eat them. I'll be honest with you. They look delicious. 
I can't stand the smell of them. They don't smell bad really, but, and I don't know if it's because I'm pregnant, but lately whenever I go into my grow tent or walk by one of my blooming Hoyas, like I just cannot stand the smell. It smells kind of weird to me. Something smells a little bit off to me about the sap it secretes. And then not only that, the sap, that sap you guys is so, messy and I can't get some of my Hoyas to stop blooming, especially my Bertonier, Bertonii, Bertonier, Ber Bertone. That one blooms constantly and I'm always down there like trying to chop off the peduncles, which that's even a mess because then it secretes the like milky sap that Hoyas secrete. They're just really messy and the little um, buds, flower buds, once the fly flowers dry up, fall everywhere, get stuck in the sap that they previously secreted. And it really is just a mess that I, I was not anticipating. And I do have more Hoya, like Hoya is my most collected kind of plant. I just can't stand the blooms anymore. It's really, really driving me nuts. So if you guys have any like tricks to fix this or hacks or anything, please let me know because I am going a little bit crazy. It's just hard to keep them clean. It really is. And I do my best, but I can't always. So like while I love Hoyas, I love the thick foliage, the growth patterns on them. Um, I cannot stand the flowers anymore. Once I've seen the first cluster of blooms, I'm like, okay, that's all I need to see. Now stop blooming, please. Just put out leaf growth. But that's not how it goes. Once you get a Hoya to bloom, they bloom very prolifically. Prolifically, is that the word? They bloom a lot. So <laughs> that's kind of why I regret them. Oh my gosh. They're just out of control. What do I do? Help me. Next up is kind of a random one, but it is Oblica nodes. So I did buy some Oblica nodes and I have gotten them to grow at this point. Like again, I'll insert them on screen so you can see what I've gotten to grow from the nodes. They literally were just nodes. Uh, but what I'm learning about Oblica nodes or Oblica runners is often the node on the cut does send out runners like more frequently than it's going to send out growth right away. It's going to send out just like a bunch of nodes, which is kind of exciting because then you have more nodes to try and propagate, but it also can be a little bit frustrating if you're just expecting like just a plant to start growing like a fresh leaf to pop out of there or whatever. I think I've been seeing oblique nodes going for like a hundred, $150 lately, which is a lot less than they were a year ago or even six months ago. But I do think it is still like a lot of money for the, the gamble of getting like actual growth instead of it just throwing out runners. You'll see on screen what I mean. I've tried a few different things to try to get them to, to see if I can figure out what would make them pop like an actual growth point or an actual like leaf growth point as opposed to a runner, but I just haven't really been able to figure that out. So if you have a lot of experience with oblique nodes, then let me know, maybe I'm missing something. Over time, I do have usually ended up with like actual oblique leaf growth, but it does take a lot of time and it more often has just sent out a wild runner that eventually turns into a growth point. So it's like, it's just taking a lot longer to end up with an actual like oblique leaf, which is what we're buying like the plant for. Cause we want to see those beautiful holy leaves, you know, but it just takes a lot longer than I was expecting. Maybe that's a meat issue. If it's a meat issue, let me know. If you have no problem with your oblique nodes, let me know. I would, I'm very, actually very, very interested to hear what, what your experience with them has been. If you have experience with them, I do definitely regret. Well, it's hard because I don't regret because they do end up with it. But like, I just think it would have been better to buy an already, a plant that was already starting to grow instead of fussing with the runners for so long. That's just my opinion. So I do kind of regret them. If you're on the market for an oblique a node, just keep it that in mind. But again, maybe that's just my experience. Maybe I'm just dumb, dumb and I can't do it. Maybe me and oblique nodes are not friends. We are not compatible. Maybe, I don't know, but yeah. So kind of regret, kind of not. Last up is more a category of plants, which is cacti, which are cacti, pokey plants, certain type of euphorbia, those kinds of plants, because my dogs are dumb and they get too close to them 
which is something I didn't think I'd really have an issue with. They now live super high up. So like, I really don't get to enjoy them. They're growing kind of weird. They just don't look how they're supposed to look because I can't keep them in a spot with good enough light because my dogs get into them. And then also like started out with my dogs. I mean, I have had my dogs first, but now like I have kids who would definitely get into them. So yeah, I do 100% regret buying these spiky, pokey, dangerous plants. I really love the look of the dangerous weapon looking plants, but just where I'm at with the pets and kids in my life, I do regret spending the money on them. These ones I'm inserting on screen will be going to a plant friend, Chloe. <sighs> Yeah, I do think once I'm like older and don't have pets or children living in my home, I'll probably get back into cacti. For now, I just really regret spending the money on any of them. It is what it is, you know, you win some and you lose some. And with cacti and euphorbia and spiky plants, I lost some, I think. Oh well. Those are all the plants I'm gonna be talking about in this video. Let me know what you think of my list or if you have any opinions on them, um, if you agree or disagree with any of them. All I ask is that if you disagree and you would like to share your disagreement, just state it nicely. But I am interested to hear what your thoughts are. That is it for this video. Thank you so much for watching and I will see you in my next one. <clears throat>